going to continue in the uh, book of 2 Corinthians, um, finishing up chapter 5, verses 16 through 21. Um, I'll read, and then we'll, I'll try to catch you back up. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 through 21. Wherefore, and henceforth, know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath kept, reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech, us, dis, beseech you by us. We pray in, you, in Christ's stead you be reconciled to God. For he hath made to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Let's pray. O Lord God, a merciful Father, Lord, we, we thank you for your word, Lord, that you've, you've given to us to know you better, Lord, to learn to be better, O Lord. We thank you for the sacrifice of your son. We thank you, O Lord, that you've given us the opportunity to fellowship and to grow together as a family, Lord. We thank you for everyone who's made it out tonight, O Lord, in, a, you know, in, a, in an evening when they're tired and they've been working or been busy, Lord, but they want to come to know more about you, O Lord. They want to get deeper into your word. Lord God, I pray that you are with me tonight, O Lord, as I try to express um, what I believe the scripture is saying, Lord. Let it not be of me, O oh Lord, but let it be of you. Let any of the good things that you have brought to us, Lord, permeate our souls, O oh Lord, and we will continue to live it out day to day, O oh Lord. Lord, I thank you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <clears throat> so we're continuing um, from last time where we kind of, so the, 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 before this, we're talking about how, you know, what would it be like on the Day of Judgment? We're discussing... Um, you know, I, I, gave, I gave this, this um, opinion that it would be uncomfortable for most people. We wouldn't know what exactly is going to happen, whether God's going to give us a list of all of our wrongs or he's just going to say, welcome, good and faithful servant. Um, we also talked about um, we also talked about what it meant to be in Christ. Um, and we, we kind of uh, basically continuing this thing. The book of Second Corinthians is talking about um, is Paul second or third letter to the Corinthians, and there's, there's still a problem with them. Um, they've dealt with what he asked him to in 1 Corinthians in terms of getting rid of the man who was uh, having sex with his father's wife. Um, he's dealt with the tongue speaking. He's dealt with all these different other issues. And, but there's still grumbling amongst them about him. They're still kind of fast, uh, fixated on, on, on false teachings and false preachers. And, you know, he's talking, he's trying to write a letter to them before he arrives to kind of deal with some of that and to explain what the other letters were about, all right? And it, it, we've kind of reached a point where he's, 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 he's uh, I think he's making a case, not for himself, but for how we should behave and what his mission is. He's saying, you're accusing me of certain things, but my mission is God. My mission is to spread the gospel. So in that mission, how have I failed? Any, any, um, these, these comments, these thoughts, these dissensions are not helping that mission. Um, so we reach this point in verse 16 um, where he, well, let me, let me go back a couple of verses, actually. I don't like doing long introductions. Verse 13 says, for, for, for whether we be beside ourselves to God, whether we be sober, it is for your cause. For the love of Christ constrain us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then, we are, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Verse 16, wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh. So he's, 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 he's talking, well, do you remember from last time who the we he's referring to is? Because he says we and you. I'm sorry? Well, that was that was that that was a point I was trying to say in the context, not necessarily. Um, sometimes he's saying we the believers. Sometimes he's talking about we of that time. 
But a lot of the time he's talking about himself and his companions, those in the apostles. And so one of the dangers in reading this is we have a lot of these verses that we know instinctively and we've memorized and we say to help us in times of distress. For example, we're going to talk about verse 17. Therefore, in, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, a new creation, right? And that has like a, this, this global meaning to us. But in the context of this, he's making a specific argument, right? Before this, he's saying we and you and it's, it's interchangeable. And I just want to remind you once again that he's going to say we sometimes and he really means the apostles, him, the people who are in charge of these kind of things. Sometimes he means us, the globally. We, we can, um, who has this habit where they read the Bible and there are bad things happening? And we say, those Jewish people, those Egyptians, right? We don't, we don't really accept a lot of that, right? But mm -hmm. that's not the way to read the Bible. We, we are the ones who, who did it. Like, um, Paul talked about, uh, not Paul, Peter talked about in Acts that you crucified the, 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 the Lord of glory, right? You did it, even though a lot of them weren't even there said, you did it. You crucified the Son of Glory. So there, is, there, there are times when we need to take the context, get rid of it, and kind of really understand that God is talking about us, right? There are other times when we got to kind of go back into the context and say, well, what is the, the passage trying to say, right? Um, and, and so in, in defense of what's happening, Paul is also teaching us something, right? And so he's, he's saying that we've been changed. But he's, not ta he's talking about we believers, pe we the people of Cor Corinth, but he's also spe specifically talking about himself. Why do you think he's talking about himself when he says we have been changed? That, um, that, that, if, that if he died for all, then they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves. Where, why does he say, verse 14, for the love of Christ constrains us, specifically himself, but we can take that. Because we thus judge, he's talking about himself and, and the people with him, that if one died for all, then we are all dead. Why would he say that? In the context of 2 Corinthians. Um, 14, 15. Uh, to prove his sincerity. Prove his sincerity, yeah. yeah. Um, because I guess the false teachers were, were slandering Paul, so right. they were questioning his, his motivations. And he's just like saying, no, I'm new. I've changed, uh, I don't live for me, so why would I even, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm, it's just, mm -hmm. yeah, proving the sincerity. And now, if I made that argument, if one of us made that argument, it would be prideful, right? Right? If you say, well, look, look I'm a deacon, look at all the things I've done, look how many people I've helped. I can't make that argument. What Paul is not saying, what, what, what Paul is saying is they know, they know him. They know what his singular focus and mission is. And it's, it, it's not the things you're accusing him of, right? It's he's saying that I have I've accepted this fact that I'm constrained by, Christ, by the love of Christ. That, that, that when he died, I died with him. And that the new life that I have is, is, is constricted me for the singular purpose and mission of the gospel, of spreading and reconciling. I'm going to talk about later, reconciling the world to God. Right? That's how he attacks this argument, as opposed to saying, I'm this great guy. He says, you know me. What has been my focus? Make sense? All right, I just need you guys to know that as we, we go forward. Um, so verse 16 says, wherefore, henceforth, we know no man after the flesh. So what, what do you think he means by not knowing any man after the flesh? And I had a lot of trouble with this. There we go. Yeah. 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 Um, but but why? All right. Let's let's go. Let's jump in. Someone read Ephesians two, verses fourteen through eighteen. Fourteen through eighteen. Yeah. Ephesians two fourteen through eighteen. For he himself is our peace, who has made us both one, and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments expressed in order ordinances that he might create in himself one new man in place of two so making peace and might reconcile us both to god in one body through the cross thereby killing the hostility and he came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near for through him we both have access in one spirit to the father 
Okay, so that's what you're saying, right? That we're no longer uh, Puerto Rican, Dominican, Jamaican, American, any other culture. We're no longer Gentiles and Jews. We're no longer by the blood or anything or, or any of those kind of things, right? And and so that's that's one thing that he means. What what's, what else could he mean by the flesh? What's the flesh mean in the Bible? What does that refer to? Huh? Sin, right? Carnal. Um, um, but it's the opposite of what? Spirit. Spirit. What were you going to say? Yeah. No, I would just, I think what, so the people that were uh, um, criticizing Paul, they were Judaizers, correct? Or am I? Yeah, Judaizers, they were, they, they, you know, Judaizers, but he, he describes them early on as just, well, I don't want to limit them to that group, but, okay. they, but they basically, they wanted to um, make themselves bigger at his expense. No, because I'm I'm thinking that he said he knows no man after the flesh to say that he doesn't regard the things that mm -hmm. maybe the Judaizers were regarding, such as the bloodline or the that, or even Paul's exactly. own like yeah. past, mm -hmm. or he was a Jew, and mm -hmm. he could have elevated his bloodline, but he says, no, I changed, I'm, I don't see that. Exactly. Stuff. That's what he means as well. It's all these mm -hmm. things. It's very deep and rich as you're reading the Bible. It, it, it's all of these things. So yes, it's also in the sense of of, 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 he's, of he's, he, he's not looking at it in terms of the law, but what you do. He's not judging men um, based on what they do. We're going to talk about later on. He's not judging men based on what their life was. He used to be a drug dealer. So, therefore, he used to steal. So, therefore, I'm going to watch. He's not looking at men that way. He's seeing them from a spiritual sense. And that's what, that's what these verses are talking about. Um, can someone read Romans 3, verse 9 through 12. What then will be done in that day? Not at all. We have already charged that both Jews and Greeks are all under the standard. As it is written, there is none righteous, not even one. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks for God. All have turned aside. Together they have become useless. There is none who does good. There is not even one. Good. Okay, so that's why we don't look after the flesh. Because I can find something wrong with every single person here. And by right, they can find something wrong with Paul. And so he, he's, he's elevating the argument. He's not saying, well, I've got to prove why I wasn't here. I'm going to prove this. I'm, I'm, I'm not this bad guy. Okay, you know, he's saying, he's saying, I don't look after man after the flesh. Why are you looking at man after the flesh? Judge me on, am I sold out for Christ? Am I doing the mission of Christ? Yes. Me too. First. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I, my thoughts also went, and I don't want to let this stretch. But my thoughts also went to the fact that when we um, look at people that are not saved, mm -hmm. we exactly. often not look at them as mm -hmm. how we see them mm -hmm. and think that we are better, mm -hmm. but to see, look at them with eternity in view, the way Jesus sees them, and then the love Amen. that comes across when we speak to them is different than if you look at somebody and say, oh, look at this person. Right, you know, exactly. Like Pharisee, you say, well, I'm glad I'm not like that one over there. Mm. That can be us if you're not careful because he got us from the same pit that that person is still in. Excellent. That's exactly what he's saying. He's going to talk about later on about that, we, that Paul, specifically the apostles, are ministers of reconciliation. But we also are ministers of reconciliation. That Christ came, his, what he did was reconcile the world, not everybody in the world, but the, the elect to, to God, because we were at war with God. And so once again, that's another thing. He's saying these are, these are, these are um, general things, that he, lessons he's trying to do. He's very specific to this argument, but it's general. Don't judge me that way. I don't judge you that way. Don't judge anyone that way. Why? Because we go back again to the verses before, 14, 15. He says, for the love of Christ constrains us because we judge that if one died, then we are all dead. Everybody, including the, the unbelievers, right? They're all dead. But some of us are saved. The fact that we're saved does not necessarily make us special or better, right? And so he can't make the argument that he's without sin and he's doing everything perfectly. He's just saying, you've known my intentions. Once again, I gave the argument, the, 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 um, this example before, that if Pastor Peter says something to me, no matter how harsh, I'm going to give him a, a lot of leeway because I know 
his goal has always been about the gospel. His goal is to grow me and mature me. So if he comes to me and he says, Glenn, and he just reads me the right act, which he wouldn't do, I, you know, I, I, I would have to take that in a, in a very good way. Right? I wouldn't look after the flesh and say, Pastor P is just picking on me because he's me. Right? I, I would stop and say, okay, how is this going to help me grow as a person? Hmm? Um, and then let's go to James 2, 2 to 4. And everyone should know this because Benito taught it. <laughs> Chapter 2, verses 2 and 4. Yeah. For if a man comes into your assembly with a gold ring and dressed in fine clothes, and there also comes in a poor man in dirty clothes, and you pay special attention to the one who is wearing the fine clothes, and you say, you sit here in a good place, and you say to the poor man, you stand over there or sit down by my footstool, have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil motives? Mm -hmm. Right? What, what, what's, thank you very much. What's one of the things they were doing in 1 Corinthians? What was the first thing he says? Are we a Paul? We are a Paulus? Right? They're doing the same thing. Now they're saying, um, Paul's not a good apostle because. Paul's not coming back because. They're looking at it from a fleshly mindset. Rather than saying, wow, Paul's doing a lot for the gospel. What, what's Paul going after? You know, let's pray for Paul. Let's, let's keep Paul in prayer. I, I know Paul wants to come here. They're not thinking of that way. They're, their minds are fleshly. So what I want you guys to think about tonight is perspective. Paul is saying, it's going to look bad if you look at it from a fleshly mind. But if you look at it from a spiritual perspective, it's going to be different. It's going to be different. I want you guys to be spiritually minded. Right? It's not just a defense of himself, which is what he could have done. He could have just wrote a letter saying, I'm an apostle, I'm Paul, listen to me. That's the end of the story. He's teaching them a lesson here in, in the fact that they're, they're being swayed by these Judaizers because they want to be swayed. Not because they've come to these conclusions in and of themselves. Right? So I think he's saying all of those things. That he no longer looks at man from an earthly perspective, from an earthly view in terms of their affiliation, whether they're Jew or Gentile, whether they have the same family or not. He's not looking at to see if they're rich or they're honorable or their wisdom or their eloquence. He's trying to see who is for God and who is not. Who, who, is, who is sold out on that mission? And then he wants those people to be uh, uh, alongside of him. And he's not, he's not gossiping. In a, is, is what he's saying. That's why you guys are gossiping because your your focus is not on Christ. Any questions? No? All right. He then talks about that he does he doesn't see um, man after the flesh, and then he says we that though we have known Christ after the flesh. Once again, who's the we? Paul, the apostles, those who, who either knew Christ or, or were taught by Christ or were taught by one of the apostles. He's saying, he's saying we knew Christ when he was walking on the earth. We. We? Not because most of the people in Corinth wouldn't have known him. Paul established, went there and established church. Yes, but Sebastian. Who Paul did he see Jesus after the flesh? So he had a Damascus road where he said, you know, you, 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 why are you persecuting me? And then he, it, it's alluded to that he taught him for three years in, in a spiritual sense. Like he taught him that he said, I was not taught of the other apostles, but by Jesus Christ's revelation. So in a way, he, he's able to say he's known him or or. And also, like I said, it's not limited. That's why I asked the question. It's not limited to just physically knowing him. Um, um, it's also this idea that he was a man. Right. We talk about the yeah. fact the whole sermon this last week was about the fact that he was born of a virgin. And it, it, he was a man. He did live. He did walk. There's a benefit to understanding that, but he doesn't. But he's saying, but I don't look at it from that perspective anymore. I'm already about the spiritual aspect. Yes, Rose, you're right there. I couldn't see. <laughs> Can that verse be used for a defense for um, what an actual apostle is? Yes, I would say so. I would say so. I mean, I would. It wouldn't be the first thing I go to, but I would say that it would be in a long line of a, a series of things. That's how all the unsaved see Christ yeah. as a man. Really. Yeah, as a man. He's a, he's what, a what man did it? Two thousand years ago, died. Yeah. What else? Like what did they say? He's, he's a prophet. But well, we see teacher. him definitely. We, we see him as God. He's yeah. And, Amen. You know, as a prophet, as a teacher, as a as, yeah. As just all like these he said in the, in the, mm. yeah. Right. 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 So I, I I I didn't really understand this at first, 
Because I was like, what do you mean you don't know Christ? <laughs> you know, and, I, and I actually had to go to John Gill's. And, and, he, and he was saying in the sense of, actually, let's go, we'll go some verses and I'll explain what, what it really means. But, but it's knowing him in the flesh in the sense of all apostles would know him. But it's also just knowing that Christ lived and then looking at the things that he did and kind of judging it from a man's perspective rather from a spiritual perspective. Let's go to Acts uh, chapter 1, verses 2 through 6. Acts 1? Yeah. Chapter 1, verses 2 through 6. And so what I'm really doing here is trying to get you guys really deep into the context, because that's what helped me to make sense of this. Out of context, you can get a lot of spiritual meaning from it, but right. I, it, I don't think that's what Paul's intention was. <clears throat> Chapter 1, verses 2 through 6. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. And so the day when he was taken up, after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen, he presented himself alive to them after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You heard from me. For John baptizing with water, but you will, but you will, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? That always throws me for a loop. Thank you, Denise. That threw me for a loop. Think about it, right? He came, he rose from the dead. Visited 500 people. They, you know, Thomas is putting his hand. Through the, you know, all these things are happening, right? He's telling them about the kingdom. He's teaching them, right? He's ascending onto heaven, right? What's their question? What's the question to them? What was the question? Verse six. Yeah. Yeah. The earthly. Yeah. All the stuff that they're seeing, all the majestic, the, the resurrection. They're thinking, all right, now the kingdom is going to be set set aside. Now we're going to get it. You know, it's like Pastor Peter is like evangelizing, evangelizing. Church is finally big, and we're like, well, now we get a bigger building. It's not the point. The point isn't get a bigger building. The point isn't to have an earthly kingdom, but it's to have a spiritual kingdom. How do they not know that after so many years? I, I'm bringing this up to show you that he's saying, if we focus just on, on a physical sense, we're going to get confused. We're getting lost. That's what they're doing to who? What are the people of Corinth doing? They're looking at Paul at what? In the flesh. He's saying, even if you look at Christ that way, you're going to go off. It's a building block to a, a, another important doctrine and fact. It's not the end all be all to kind of, there are people who go to um, Jerusalem and then they go in the desert, they get crazy and they start having visions and they think they're, they're Jesus. It happens, I think it's a joke, look it up, right? Because they're, they're thinking about it from a physical standpoint. What it, what, what? It's called the burning What do you call it? Burning man festival. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, you don't have to fly that far. That's the type of thing that happens. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. What was Luther's problem, right? What was Luther's problem before he, he found out about Sola Scriptura and, 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 and by faith alone? What did, he, what did he used to do to himself? He used to literally, because he, he was reading the Bible, literally, his flesh. His flesh is bad. He was beating him. That was his way of atoning, right? That's not what the Bible is saying, right? Right? He wasn't atoning by whipping flagellation what he was doing, right? Yeah. We can do that. We can, we, can, we can say, well, Jesus did this, and I'm just going to do whatever Jesus did in this <laughs> linear way. He's saying, no more. So my point is here that the apostles, with all the knowledge, all the things they had, they kind of went astray. They were still asking silly questions. When they were with him for three years, they asked him silly questions. We are fallible <laughs> as well. Bless you. Bless you. So when he says, so once again, this is in defense of what they're talking about. I have, even though, now, um, let's, before I get too far, um, Isaiah 53, verses 2 through 4. Some of you should have memorized it. <laughs> Isaiah 53. <laughs> I don't know, really, I'm tired of it. Um, well, but he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or cleanliness. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by man, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as if were our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our grief and carried our sorrow. We yet esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. Right. Right? In the flesh, was he, was he lauded? 
Was he, you know, was he, was he, was he greedy like the Messiah? Mm -hmm. No, they, they crucified him. It, I think Paul, Paul is trying to make a point here that, that, that we can't look at anybody after the flesh because from a fleshly perspective, we're looking at man, even the son of God standing before you is not going to, is not going to fulfill it. What were they asking Jesus to do? Sign, Sign in the heavens. He fulfilled the signs in the Bible, they, that wasn't enough for them. They wanted a sign in the heaven. They wanted lightning to strike or something. He said, he said, look at all the things that I've done. Have I, what have I done that's worthy of me being crucified? And, and, they, and, and they said, you're a devil, right? He said, he said, he said, they are accusing him of being a demon. What did he do? He said, he said, um, John the Baptist came, right? He didn't drink. He didn't eat. He didn't do anything. And you, you didn't want him. I drink with sinners. I, now you call me a, wine, a, 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 a drunkard. Yeah, well, I don't know, KJV thing. Yeah, so they, they, they're, they're calling him a drunkard because he, he said one person came and was as saintly as you could possibly be, and you rejected him. I came and I said, look, I'm going to go out to the byways and highways, and I'm going to meet the people who are sinners. And they said that he was a devil. If we look at people out the flesh, we're always going to find a flaw. What's the biggest, fastest way to destroy a church? No, 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 quicker, quicker way. Even quicker. Wrong doctrine. You got it? No. Those are all right, but. You said, ah. Uh. No, that's all I had. <laughs> exactly what I was trying to say. What was it? What, what? The pastor. Oh, the pastor. Just say oh, something yeah. about the pastor. He's committed adultery, he's stealing funds, something, right? That The church is, is broken up, right? Unless they have this, a great elder staff or something, it's, go, it's over. If you hear that this church where the pastor has been, they, they had a, that happened one time where the pastor, they f literally found his hand in the, the, the money jar, <laughs> yeah. right? It's over. Like, why are you going? But they couldn't get <laughs> <laughs> But I'm sure the attendance dropped, right? I hope it did. That's the quickest way to destroy a church is to go to the top to impeach. The, the, that's, why the, that's why one of the criteria is, 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 is of a, a pastor is that, he can't, that, he's, that it's, it's, it's not easy to bring a charge against him. Because that's how they do it. What do you think would happen to the Corinthian church if they were able to let some of these charges against Paul stick? He, 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 he was the one who founded it. He was the one who was with them. He lived with them. If, if, if he's not right, okay. If the person that saved you, or the, not saved you, but the person who brought the gospel to you, <laughs> Jesus, they could have been talking about Jesus, right? Save <laughs> The person that, that, that first presented the gospel to well, doesn't Paul say it? He, he says a couple of things about that I could save some more or something. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he was wrong. Kind of language. <laughs> I know you're not Paul, but go ahead. Oh, well. Just come to you brother. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> moving on, moving on. The person that presented the gospel to you, the, the person mentoring you, discipling you, if something comes up about them, what is it going to do to your faith? Or your, or your conviction? It's going it's to test it. It may not yeah. break it if you're elect, but it's going to make you wonder, hey, Am I right? Because the person who mentored me, the person who founded and helped me and grew me, he's wacky. He's, he's an apostate now. That would be a concern. That's the whole point of this. Paul is trying to make them understand that if you see me doing something wrong in a spiritual sense, if you see me not pursuing the things of God, then you should come and correct me. But to sit there and have discussions about the fact that I didn't come and you think I'm mad at you and why is Paul picking on us? He, that's thinking of him after the flesh. Right? The same thing they did to Christ. They looked at Christ after the flesh and they started making assumptions as, you know, why doesn't he make the, you know, the thunderstorm, you know, do something, make the, the, the sky turn pink or something. Right? That's what they were doing. They were, they, they, instead of looking at what the scripture said, they, they started making up their own things because they had to be convinced. It, with the, with the, in the parable of um, Lazarus and the, uh, and, and the rich man, what, what did the rich man think would make a difference? If somebody went back. If someone went back, right? Yeah. Right? And he said it wouldn't, make, it wouldn't make a difference. It wouldn't make a difference. It's true. It would not make a difference because if you're looking after the flesh, you're looking for a flaw. Mm -hmm. Right? And I would hope that everyone would look at me with spiritual eyes and say, okay, Glenn, I, I know you're failing in all these different things, but I see you pursuing Christ. I see you growing, and I'm praying that you're going to grow. Looking from the flesh, you're, tr you're actually rooting for someone to fail. All right? Yeah. 
That's the And Paul could have said, I have known Christ after the flesh. Or I and the other apostles have known Christ after the flesh. I, I am I'm, I'm a messenger of God. You gotta listen to me. I know I know Jesus. Don't look at what I'm doing. Right? I, I, I was sent by the Pope or whatever. He could he could have he could have used that. He says, no, he said he says right here, I have no even though I've known Christ after the flesh, he says the next thing, yet I have known him no more. Right? He's saying that he's making he's 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 not making a case that just being a Christian is enough. Right? And John Gill helped me out with this a, a little bit too when he says because what what do you think he means when he says he that we know him no more after the flesh. He's saying that even though they've known Christ after the flesh, yet from now, from now Paul and the other apostles don't know him after the flesh anymore. Why? Why, do you think, why would you think he would do that? Maybe looking at Christ as like Christ the man who's walked on the earth and mm. now seeing him as God. Didn't. Right, he's God. Right? He's not limited to that 33 years. He's God, and so everything is filtered through this prism of God the Father, God the Son, and, and what he did. Because if he was just a man, there, there's a question about our resurrection. There's a question about our newness in Christ. But if he's God made flesh, like the, the sermon was talking about, if he was named Emmanuel, right, Jesus, one who came to save, but he was God in, in flesh, then it makes, then everything we're talking about, then he can go to verse 17 and say, therefore, if any man be in Christ. Because he's, he's not just a man. So what he's saying is, and this is an attack on the Judaizers and the people that were accusing him, because he's saying some could claim that they knew him, some could like Jesus because he was Jewish. Some could like him because he was a prophet. Some could, could like him because he was a teacher and they liked what he was teaching. Some could like him because he never did anything wrong. Or some could like some of the stories that he told. I know people who go to the Catholic church, Greek church, and like, oh, I like, I like the parables. I like those, but he, they don't know nothing of Christ. Yeah. Right? Or they, or they like the idea of church. He says, that's, that's not my focus, right? It's, it's knowing Christ from a spiritual sense. That's all that matters. And when I say all that matters, I mean, the, the whole thing matters, but the perspective isn't, well, I knew him, or he's Jewish, so, and I'm Jewish, so, oh, I got a leg up, you know? Uh, Jesus went to this well, and I went to the well, too. It is, that's not what it's about. It's the fact that we identify with him spiritually. If we identify with him spiritually, then we could have died with him and arose with him. You see the difference? But, he's, but, but what are they doing? They're trying to gain credence by bringing Paul down. They're trying to show through their wisdom and their eloquence and through their following and through their understanding of the law that they are better. And Paul says, at least you know one thing. I'm not trying to elevate myself because I'm sold out to, for Christ. That's my goal and my focus. So if you see someone who is trying to elevate themselves after the flesh, if you see people who are teaching you to look at the appearance of man, what James 2 uh, is saying not to do, that should concern you. right? Instead of him attacking them, their character, he's saying, this is how a Christian should look at it. Do you agree or not? Are you looking at it this way? Then they should be ashamed. They should be convicted. Right? It's, a different, it's a different way of doing it. Sometimes you've got to lead people to the truth. And I think that's what he's doing here. <clears throat> Any questions about that? Because I was very confused about what he means by um, not knowing Christ anymore. But that's what it means. It's not anymore after the flesh. Anymore in, the, in a physical sense, rather, rather more as a, as a spiritual incarnation of God. Right? fact that he's left his Holy Spirit and mm -hmm. the beginning of Acts is all about that mm -hmm. like kind of backs that up. Exactly, exactly. But what happens, right? Acts 1. When is the kingdom coming? When are we going to see it? That's, that's the heart. And these are, they're as saved as you can be saved, right? These are the people Christ went to see. They touched him. They felt him. He, he, he taught them and then he sent them out. We haven't seen Christ in that way. <clears throat> We don't know Christ that we weren't taught of Christ directly, and they made this mistake. And he's saying, "What does it talk about in Romans? Renewing our minds, right? Yeah. 
And he's trying to help them here. He's saying it a different way. Renew your mind. Stop looking at things after the flesh. And he, and he picked the most radical, drastic thing he can give an example, which is Christ himself. Christ, we have to look at it with spiritual eyes to understand what he did and what his meaning is. Because we can't just limit it to the 33 years on earth. He was before that, and he will be after that. Any other, any other questions? Or any other thoughts? But like I said, that's, but this is leading somewhere where you were talking about reconciliation. It's leading somewhere. It's yeah, building on go it. ahead. It's yeah. 20. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, go ahead, go ahead. We, we is referring to Paul and the apostles. Mm. But it seems like he's, he's preaching the gospel to them. Uh, they doesn't think some of them are saved, you know. Right. Uh, or he's reminding them. So, so, yeah, so a lot of the Bible is also we pray um, you and Christ be, be reconciled to God. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. you, if the we is for the, for him and the apostles. No, it's, it's, it's jumping back and forth to the believers. Mm -hmm. You know, he's beseeching the believers. Christ is speaking through Paul Amen. to the, the believers in the church. Be reconciled to God. He's right. preaching the gospel. Right. You know, so part of it, I think he's, if you're not saved, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> what, what do you, you know, think? I'm encouraging some of you to get a focus, and the mm -hmm. others who aren't. You know, I beseech you, be reconciled to God. You know, do not. And Chuck, where, where do you see that principle somewhere else? Where, where he talks about you're so focused on other people that you yourself might fall? That's kind of what that's saying. Huh? Yeah, that, that one and also, he, um, what was the other one? Um, I can't think right now. Um, no, but he's just, there's many scriptures that say it. But basically, well, you, also the, the log in your eye and the beam in oh, the other person's yeah. eye, that's one. Or examine yourself. Yeah, it's, examine it's yourself faith, lest you fall. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you spend so much time looking at everyone else right. that, that you are not realizing that you are pride, you have sin, you're doing all these things. Yes. Right, it's just, you know, I'm just thinking here because sometimes, you know, the, the church at large in general, you know, we can focus on someone that's gifted in the sense, oh, you know, they're very eloquent in their words or they're, or they're it's about the me, 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 mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and we can get so caught up looking at it through, in the flesh as opposed to looking at it in the spirit. Amen. You know, like uh, God is working through that person. Right, God is working through that person. But when we start seeing that with our own eyes, mm -hmm. this is something that we, 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 we really got to be careful not to be swayed because mm -hmm. when we say, well, oh, man, you know, I like the way this person speaks and everything, so I'm, I'm going to hang out with that person. We just lost it right there. And, I, and I'm generally speaking, you know. I, I remember a couple of years back, uh, Pastor Phil and I, we went to, to, to an open-air preacher's uh, like, like conference. And they were saying that, that, that sometimes, you know, as open-air preachers, you can get so caught up in yourself, you know, that, I mean, you know, it, the, 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 the message was so convicting that you had a lot of the guys go up there and just repenting. Mm -hmm. Because it's not about us. It's not about, you know, the eloquent words. Yes, God's, God uses. Okay, but when we start hearing about, oh, I did this, or I did that, you know, and, and, you, and still you're giving glory to God, you know, you, you're not giving glory to God because it's all about you. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so this is something that we, we as, as a church, and I'm generalizing, that we, we really got to be very careful, you know, not, not to fall in line mm -hmm. with that sort of person or no. But what is the Lord doing and how is God leading? Because if, if you see a, a, like a shift, you know, and, and you see one group here and, and one, one group there, then that's dangerous. Mm -hmm. So the gist of that is don't follow me, okay? <laughs> Do not follow me. Um, but thank you, that's a good point. And, 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 and I think this is, this is in this. We sh he's saying it. No, no, no man after the flesh at all, period. Even Christ. Spiritual eyes. Yeah, I, I think, like, even just going to what Jose said, I think the Corinthians did that with, like, like the gifts, like, they're kind of yes. flesh, uh, flesh the, aside the gifts, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. like, they made the tongues about the flesh, and, mm. and like, oh, you gifted, you, like, everything was like the flesh, they turned their, like, the, the gifts, the spiritual gifts, mm. into physical things, and made it about the physical, and, mm. you know, I think that's a good example of what you're talking about. Right, because it's not limited to them. This is for us. So once again, yeah. I'm t trying to get into the context, but it's for us. We the do Jews it. seek a sign, and the Greeks seek, seek wisdom. wisdom you know? Right, mm -hmm. exactly. So that's in the church, too. The, mm -hmm. You know, it's not just limited to that mm -hmm. outlook of people outside the church, but Paul's saying you guys are acting like, you know, before you... Exactly. You should have come to know the Lord in a different way. You know? Amen, amen. And that's not how you're supposed to be. All right, so, so with this context in mind, 
But this, the laboring of one verse. Verse 17, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. What, what does it mean that a Christian is a new creation, a new cre uh, creature? What does it mean? Now, I don't, that, you can tell me what you think, all right. I think not enslaved to the flesh anymore. Right, right. But now it's like, it's through the Holy Spirit that guides him and that's going to lead him in life versus mm -hmm. the flesh. Yes. You have a new nature. Right, you have a new nature, right? I think, you know, before you're a Christian, you're basically living for yourself and your own mm -hmm. ideas. And, 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 and when, when you become a Christian, that, that impact should impact every part of your, mm -hmm. your life, the way you live, the way you think. Everything should change. Exactly. Because now right. you're under see, it, God's, it, God's teaching. And you recognize that tr truth. There's a truth. And it's not in you. It's, Amen. So that changes. It should change every part of your life. So. Amen. Amen. Well, Thank you, Chuck. Yes. But to go on with what Dee was saying, you know, it, 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 it's, it's the flesh and the spirit. You know, we were once in the flesh, as Ephesians says, that we were dead in our trespasses and sins, now we're children of light. You know, so we are in the spirit. We look at, at, at we we look at, at at everything through a new lens mm -hmm. now. In the spirit, the Holy Spirit is the one that en enables mm -hmm. us to see where the sin is at. What are we struggling with? It's not about us, you know, but it's about Him. Mm -hmm. Learning to exalt Christ and glorifying Christ in our own, you know, though we still live in our earthly tent, but we only see in part. Amen. Amen. Oh yes. Um, that God gives us. A new heart with right. new desires to glorify that will glorify God. Mm. Amen. Amen. Yes. Um, and then with all of that, yeah. we also need to, like, it's like having a teachable spirit, right? Because we yeah. still struggle with the flesh. We're struggling now, and now there's a battle mm. as opposed to we freely are um, sinning, mm. but we're also teachable. Amen. 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 All, all that's right. All that's right. Any other mm. thoughts? No, we are to, uh, mm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. We're new, right? Um, some, someone read, before I, before I go on, someone read Colossians, oh, it's a lot. Uh, maybe I should skim some of this. Colossians 3, 1 through 17. All kind of, it's a whole Bible study in itself. But I, read the New Testament? <laughs> you can split it up. You can do half of the New Testament. Uh, let me do it here. Okay. I couldn't pick one part of it. It was, it was still good, right? I, I'll jump. I'll jump around. Verse one: If they, if if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. So seek, right? We're seeking what is uh, two. Set your affection on the things that are above. Verse three: For you, for you are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Verse four: When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then he shall uh, appear with him in glory. Five: Mortify your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, um, covetousness, idolatry. Verse 6, for, for which sake the wrath of God, I'm jumping around, for, for which for, switch things, sake of the wrath of God, coming on the children of disobedience. So, so he's showing this dichotomy between those who are in Christ and those who are not. <coughs> uh, verse 8, but now you are put up all these things, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication. Um, verse 9, lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man and his deeds. Kind of what you were talking about, the new nature, um, this, this, this new desire. Um, verse 10, and I've put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created. Verse 11, whether there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and all. Verse 13, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, also do ye, right? Uh, verse 15, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Verse 16 to 17, let the word of Christ do actually in all, admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God and Father by him, right? All those things that you guys mentioned and more, right? Everything. We, we, we've been transformed. But what does that mean in the context? You guys were describing what it means, right? How it looks, what we should do as new creation. But what is Paul? What, what is Paul's point about it? If, if therefore, is any man in Christ a new creature? He just told us in verse 16 to not do what? Okay. The flesh. Okay? So if we're now looking at the flesh, what are we looking at? Christ. We're looking with spiritual eyes. To see where they are, and there's two people. There's two kind of peoples, right? Not Greek, not man, not woman, not gay, not not 
ad- addict? What's it, what are the two views that Christians should be looking at at all times? Dead. Dead and alive, saved, unsaved, believer, unbeliever. Right? Yes. You have a different group, a third one? <laughs> oh, sorry. Amen. 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 Spiritual. Exactly. Thank you so much. That's a good point. Um, so, now I lost my point. That was such a good point. Um, right. So, 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 so now if you're looking men after the flesh, we're not judging based on good or bad. We're saying... Okay, Aziz, he's, he's in the camp of Christ. I'm going to mature, I'm growing, we're going to fellowship. I don't want to pick on you, but Jose, you're not in the, the camp of Christ. I evangelize, I'm trying to pray for you, I'm trying to reach out to you, I'm trying to... Th- that's Paul's focus. He's not just saying this, it's really good, and I know I've used this verse, anybody be in Christ is a new creation, I'm a new creation, and it's meant to kind of buck me up. But what he's really saying here, on top of that, it's still the truth, it's not, you're not mis, misapplying the text, but on top of that, it should be saying, okay, now we're looking at everything. I, I, my focus should be saved, unsaved. Paul's point is, are you guys saying I'm not saved? Is there a problem? Is there something where you feel like I'm lacking spiritually? Then it, bring it on. I, I want to grow into Christ. But if you're just criticizing the things that I'm doing because you're looking after me after the flesh... That's a problem, because we shouldn't be doing that, right? How many times do we do that? When we look at some, I don't like the way he, you know, I don't like his attitude, right? That's not the focus. Is he in Christ or not in Christ? If he's in Christ, we're trying to grow him and mature him. If he's not in Christ, that should be our singular focus, is recognizing that person is not in Christ. And every action he makes makes sense. He doesn't have a new nature, right? He doesn't have the desire for these kind of things. Right? They're looking at Paul as if, I wonder if he's saved. You know, I wonder, I wonder what's going on with Paul. He hasn't been here for a while. Right? This man is getting stoned. He's being attacked. He's, running, he's on the run. And now he has to worry about these people who think, wonder why he's, like, I'm on the run. You know, I, I don't have a steady job. I, I don't know where I'm going to rest my head next. Don't you think I would rather be in Corinth, where I would have a house and people would take care of me? I'm, I'm out here spreading the gospel. Right? So, therefore, if anybody being Christ is a new creature, I'm a new creature. Look at me with that lens. Look at everybody with that lens. Right? Why? Because everything has passed away. Everything has become new. Not that I'm not a sinner anymore. Not that I don't make mistakes. Not that I don't, you know, say rude things or I mess up. But now, all things have become new and my focus has changed. And now your focus on me has to change. Right? So that's going to affect how we deal with unbelievers. That's how it's going to affect how we deal with believers. Right? First, what is 1 Corinthians um, was it 13? What does it talk about? Hope all things. Believe all things. What do you think it's saying that for? Because Christians never lie? They don't, they don't, they don't, say, they don't break their promises? Right? They do. But my first desire, if someone tells me something about Ishmael, is not that, yep, I knew it. it, it, it it's, that's not my, that shouldn't be our heart. It should be, wow, that, you know, he, needs, he probably needs prayer. I need to go talk to him. Is he okay? Right? Not, I knew it. I knew he was that kind of guy. Right? We no longer look after the flesh. We're looking at two type of people. One person needs to be matured and grow in the faith, and they need someone to be alongside of him and to help him and to explain what it means to be in Christ. And the other person doesn't know anything. He's dead. Or she's dead. I don't want to, you know, focus on one gender here. Um... And so that's the gist of all things have become new. So if your focus is on the flesh all the time, maybe all things are new for you and you need to renew your mind. You need to get yourself straight because of the, the speck in your eye and the, the, the log in the, in the... You have a log in your eye and there's a speck in the other person's eye. I always think it the other way. That's why I say that. Right? So, so, so that's, that's that principle right here. Right? If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. He should look with spiritual eyes. That's what he's saying. All right? On top of all the other meanings. Right? You can take all the other meanings and still have the context. All right? And now we know he's talking about everybody because he says if any man, if any woman, if anybody be in Christ. Right? Any thoughts on that? Oh, what? Um, so, uh, 
There was just one one scripture that keeps on coming to to my mind and to keep on saying this stuff. Um, that's where Paul Paul was talking to the Christians, um, the ones that are still drinking milk. Right. Yes. And, yes. Uh, I, I could have brought that up. Yeah, you know, I think I was convicted of that verse because, like, you know, there have been times in my life where, where, where I say, you know, am I really truly walking in the things of God? Mm. Like, am I still drinking milk? Mm. Even though I think I'm ready for the steak and mm. potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it, it's something that's um that. That, that I've been yeah. getting correction of, like, like, uh, maybe I'm not ready for that mm. meal, mm. and I and I'm still drinking milk, because mm. you know we could be puffed up, full of knowledge, and not, and yet we look at our lifestyle and we're saying to ourselves, man, you know what? I'm still going through these things. I'm still giving in to the same old temptations mm. over and over and over again. Mm. And um, you know you, you have to ask yourself. You have to examine yourself. Are you are you really ready for that meal, or do you still gotta drink the milk like mm. like, like babes in Christ? Mm. So. Mm. And and I, and I think the misconception is that once you get to meat, you stop drinking the milk. No, you still you still you still the basics principles have to continually be renewed. Like I look at a man like Paul Fry and. It's still fresh to him. It's still joyful to him. He still looks at the scriptures and says, and says, this is the word of God. It's not old or, yeah, I've read that before. Oh, I know that verse. I've done that. And I, and I haven't been saved 20, 30, 40 years. I mean, how, how dare I do that? Right? And so, so that's kind of what it is. It's, it's kind of reminding yourself, that's how you should read this verse, that you are new. Yeah, I don't like some of the things XY that person is doing, but I'm new. Right? Mm -hmm. Is that person saved? Then I need to encourage, grow them, and build them. They're not saved. Well, that's why I have a problem with them because they're not saved. They don't love Christ the way that I love Christ. Yes. I, I think Paul said, "I feed myself, my body mm -hmm. into submission." Every mm -hmm. day. I think that's what he meant by reminding himself every day that he is a new creation mm -hmm. and that this is the goal to look at things in a spiritual way. Mm -hmm. As a man. He will fail in that also, especially mm -hmm. the life that he had. Mm -hmm. It's easy understood, but that was an encouragement and an admonition at the same exactly. time. Exactly. Because it's an encouragement. Look, remember mm -hmm. to look at the spiritual. Eye. It's an admonition. Like, look, don't look at the flesh. Eye. So exactly. Both, because he did that every day of his life. It, it, it's it's end. it's very hard to evangelize someone and say you love someone when you're criticizing them and you're mad at them and they're horrible and it's a lot easier if you're like you know what this is someone who's just like me just as lost as I was three weeks ago three years ago four years ago right I was just like this person I'm gonna have compassion on this person right and I talked about in the first chapter is about comfort if they're a new creature if they're a new believer I'm gonna comfort them in their tribulations and, and strife Right? You got to know who. Yes. Eva question? has a question. Yes. Okay. He said, what if they don't want to know about Christ after months of praying and coming alongside of them? Then, then, I, then I would question um, their love of Christ. I would, yeah. <laughs> then, I, then I would definitely question, you know, where they are. Once again, it, there's no way to tell who's elect and who's not saved. But like I said, you're still concerned. You're still, you're still trying to get this thing solved. Right? All right, let's jump to verse 18. I'm not going to get everything done, but I just thought that was an important part, point for us as believers, as individuals, to kind of see that. And I fail at this all the time, right? Because he says, not only have we become new, everything's new, and then we discover this, this, this amazing fact that all things are of God. Everything is of God. It's amazing, right? We thought everything was of us before. We were the center of the universe. And now we find out everything's of God, which means that it is all going to work out to good according to his purpose. Right? It's an amazing fact. We don't have to worry about some of the things that these people are worrying about. They're sitting there worrying about Paul not coming when they shouldn't be worrying about that kind of stuff because they're in Christ. The God of the universe who controls the very breath is in control of what's happening to Paul and to them. All right? Um, 
Someone read Hebrews 11.3. Someone read Job 4.22.2. And someone read Proverbs 16.4. And I'll read Ephesians 1.11-12. And we can start. Um, Hebrews 11.3. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Right, so we, so we discover that... that, that, that Everything wasn't just here. God made it. He's in control. We're new. We, we start seeing things as, wow, we've been alienated against a holy God. Right? Uh, Job 42.2. And I someone, that... someone get ready for Ephesians 1, 11 through 12. I'm not going to read that. And someone read Proverbs 16.4. I, I, I know right, that thou can't do everything and that... No thought can be withholding from you. Right? He knows everything. He knows all of our thoughts, our actions, everything. It's Everything is of God. I, we are, we're believers, so we really fully understand that. And unbelievers don't know that. Right? It's one of the things that, that shows wh where, where we are in Christ. Um, you can go for Proverbs 16.4. The Lord has made everything for its own purpose, even the wicked for the day of evil. Amen. Everything is under God's providence. Okay, Ephesians. You want to read it, Rose? Yes. All right. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. Good. Why are we worried? What are you worried about? Right? I'm not saying don't plan, don't have a budget, don't pay your rent, but I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, I'm worried about a lot of stuff. But, you know, but we're going to focus on spiritual things, right? Because one of the concerns are, if I'm so focused on spiritual things, then everything else is going to go, you know, everything's going to go the A-Y, no, awry, no. God's in control of everything. If he's commanding you to seek the kingdom of God first, then all the necessities are going to be added on to you. Right? So, he's saying, once again, Paul is still making the defense that, that I know, I'm a new creature, everything's passed away, everything is new, and all things are of God. So everything I do is going to be for God's kingdom and his purpose. Right? And then he starts invoking Christ himself. He says, who, hath also, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. So he's saying, God, who is in control of all things, has reconciled himself, us to himself, through Jesus Christ. Right? Not Jesus Christ, the man, necessarily alone, but God, the God-man. God was in Christ. Amen. Amen. So what does it mean that God has reconciled us believers, I'm hoping everyone here is a believer, to himself. What does it mean that God has reconciled us to himself? We were at war? Okay. Right? Do, does everybody outside know that? No. Right? So you have to be new. You have to be a new creature. You have to understand that all things are of God. And if all things are of God and God created everything, then it probably wouldn't be smart to anger that, that, that being, right? To be at, at, at odds with that being. So, if everyone doesn't understand it, it makes sense that they're acting the way they're acting, right? Now, through that lens, what they're saying about Paul is crazy. Because you're saying, I don't think Paul is saved. I don't think Paul is really a believer. I think he's just saying that stuff and he's doing something else. It's, it's, it doesn't make sense, right? But also, we as people who go out to preach, and we, well, not preach, but who go out and to present the gospel, who go out and try to talk to our family members, we got to realize that, that they don't realize they're at war with God. So, so that's going to change how we deal with them. Now, he brought up the point about what a person you keep going to them and going to them. I will hammer the fact that you are at war with God. Right? Don't you realize what you're doing, that you're at odds with God? And, and I would just keep bringing that to that person because I believe he's saved and he's going to understand it. Yeah. But someone who's not saved, I'm going to do a different tack because they don't even under, they're not alive in, in a spiritual sense. Right? And I gave some example, Romans 8, 78, Ephesians 2, 14, and Colossians 1, 22 to 22, to kind of bring this idea up that we're at war with God. And that one of the missions of Christ coming here was to reconcile the elect to him. Because we were at war with God, just like the unbelievers are at war now with God. And now, 
he, Paul is saying that he is a minister of reconciliation and that by extension, we are ministers of reconciliation, right? And I think we all know what that means, but what does it mean in the context of 2 Corinthians, what we've been talking about today, right? Um, someone read 2 Corinthians chapter 3, 5 through 6, and 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, verses 2 through 3. Just, just a little snippet of, of when he was talking about it before. Not that we are sufficient in ourselves to claim anything that's coming from us, but our sufficiency is from God, who has made us sufficient to be ministers of the new covenant, not of a letter but of the Spirit. So the letter kills, but the Spirit gives us. Right, right. Spiritual. Spiritual. Um, someone read 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 2 to 3. But we have renounced the disgraceful, underhanded way. We refuse to practice cunning words to tamper with God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, we would commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. Exactly, right? Once again, he's making a defense. He's saying, I've been given this job to reconcile the world to Christ. All the elect to Christ. That's my main focus, my main goal. That should be your main focus, your main goal. So what are you really saying? Am I not doing that? If I'm not doing that, that's a, bigger, that's a different problem than what you guys are talking about. Right? And I just wanted, and, and so the world does not realize it's at war with God, and we do. They don't realize, what, 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 um, Psalms 2 says, Kiss the sun lest you die. Like, people don't realize that. They're, they're shaking their fists at God every day. And instead of us being, oh, those idiots, those fools, morons, you know, you know, we can't look at them in the flesh. We can't look at them and say, we're new. We're better. We're great. We're these believers. We got to look at it and say we were just like them. Right? And, and God has left us in this in-between state so that we can sympathize with them, right? What does it say about Jesus Christ in Hebrew? Is that he, 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 was, he, was he had the same temptations. He faced them. He didn't succumb to it, but he knows that we are tempted. He knows what it's like to be, to be hungry, right? To, 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 like in, in, in the 40 days, in, in, uh, uh, he knew what it was to thirst and to hunger. He understands why we do what we do, right? We understand why unbelievers are like the way they are. But we've been made ministers of reconciliation we're not made ministers to hey become come join my party i'm so good be like me and aziz we, we're saying look i was just like you at war with god and i didn't even realize it but now i have spiritual eyes and so i'm not looking at you as ms-13 i'm not looking at you as isis i'm not looking at you as the enemy i'm looking at you as someone who is, who, is, who, is, who is so confused that he's walking right into a, the, the path of a bullet, and I'm going to jump and save him. Right? And so if someone is that focused, and then someone else is accusing him of something, it, it's crazy. All right? Any questions? And, and next time we're going to talk about reconciling the world, about how Christ did it. Um, talks about how Christ reconciled the world unto himself um, and how amazing it is that Christ didn't impute all of our, our sins against us, right? We, we had a discussion the other day. I forgot we were having a discussion about um, the fact that uh, it wasn't just so that he, 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 he um, made, to, made us righteous, right? It wasn't just he had grace, right? Um, um, mercy, but he also had grace on us. He, he went beyond just saying, all right, I've forgiven your sins. He went beyond that process. He went more. He, didn't, he, he, he could have just said, you guys are guilty. That's it. We're done. I forgive you, but I don't forget. He could have said that. And then we're going to talk about a little bit uh, next time about how, why Paul is saying the Corinthians need to be reconciled to God. And I think you, you mentioned it, that it's, it's, it's because we gotta, we're, we're still in, we're new creatures. We have a new nature, but we're still in this in-between stage. And, and we have to be careful that we don't fall, that we don't, in the process of doing this, make ourselves uh, mess up. Why? Because we're ambassadors. We're ambassadors. Um, I still have a little time. So who is, I follow a lot of politics, but is anyone familiar? There was um, an um, ambassador in um, Britain who, got, who just he had to resign. Does anyone know what happened? 
Uh, I'll take a wild guess, sexual morality. No. <laughs> Usually, that's right. So he, he was writing secret emails, and he's just talking very badly about President Trump, right? I'm not talking about whether that's right or wrong, but he came out. And he had to resign, because not because everyone loves President Trump, not because he was... You know, they were, they, they were so mad, or what he said was so wrong. It was, he's an ambassador for, for London, for England. He's representing the country. And he didn't represent every single person in the country, so he has to be careful about what he says, what he writes, even in private and in a private email. He's representing the country. What are we doing? When we call, yeah, the minute you get baptized and you go before everyone and says, I'm going to be a Christian, this is what I'm going to do, we become his ambassador. And we're saying, this is what it means to be in Christ. This is how believers behave. This is how um, believers are supposed to act. You agree with that? Oh, good. Right. Yeah. No, no, but I'm talking about, we, we're, we're Baptists, right? So what I'm saying to you is, you could be saved and keep it secret. But when you make a public profession before everyone, that I'm a Christian and this is what I'm going to do when we go to um, the baptism, um, everyone else who knows, like, you can, you can be a Christian and that's, keep it very quiet, no one knows. When you do that public profession, everyone knows. Whether it's true or not true, you said, I'm a Christian. You get a, the Jesus tattoo or you do whatever... Mm -hmm. Wear the cross or what? Or walk around with the big like Kevin used to walk around with the big strong concordance. Everyone's gonna know, yeah. right? You're saying I identify with Christ now, or you have your Facebook and it has a big picture of Jesus on there. Everyone's looking at you and saying, "This is what a Christian does." Yes, Denise. But going on, on what Claudia mentioned, I think that even that ups the ante, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. Because we know that we're ever before Christ. Amen. So if we misrepresent Christ, amen. If we can misrepresent him in his dream, they're not going to have a clue yeah. who we are. But yeah. we've, we've grieved the heart of God. Amen. And that ought to be our Amen. Great, greatest. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I'm going to give you a, a short story. I was going to, I think I told this before. I was at a barber shop. I was just saved like six months and told a barber, yeah, I'm a Christian now. He's like, oh, you're a Christian? He's like, did you get baptized? I said, no, not yet. He said, oh, okay. Well, once you get back, I'm like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm in right now. Yeah. But for him, it didn't, it wasn't, I didn't make a public profession. Even to him, an unbeliever, it was like this transition. But I'm saying, once you tell, the minute you say, yeah, I'm a Christian, you know, I go to Grace Baptist, you're an ambassador. Right? Everything you do is going to be judged. I have another story. So I, I, I very early on, I, I knew it was wrong to watch bootlegs. So I didn't do it. But this movie came out, and I, was, I didn't want to go to the movie theater. I was in the, the restaurant, and the lady's like, hey, it's $5. I said, oh, it's $5. So I went to work. I know that movie. <laughs> oh, she got you too? Okay. <laughs> she was very nice. You know, she, was, she wasn't pushy. So I went to work the next day, and the guy was like, yeah, the movie came out. I said, I saw it. He's like, I knew it. Because he, like, he knew I didn't go to the theaters. And so he was like, yeah, I knew it. And I was so embarrassed. Because I, I kind of gave my witness away. I mean, it, it, I mean I, I've had opportunities after that to kind of fix it. But in his mind, he knew a Christian shouldn't do that. And it's like, it's a simple thing. But I've kind of, he's looked down on me at that point. Because he's like, oh, he watches boot like Sue. Did you get rid of your fire stick? <laughs> <laughs> That's not wrong. Okay, sorry, no, I don't have a fire stick. I've learned that lesson. It was many years ago. Um, but... But simple things like, I'm not, look, I'm not saying this to get you guys to be so tight. And every little thing, you got to be perfect. I'm just, I'm, I, what Paul was talking about here is spiritual eyes. Spiritual, whatever is lovely, whatever is true, whatever is, that, try to do that. I'm not asking you to be perfect. Why? Because I don't look after any man after the flesh. That's what Paul's saying. If he was talking about flesh like the Judaizers are talking about, he would have said, I look after man of the flesh. I judge people based on their actions. He's saying, I want you to look in this way and see the world in this way and look at other believers in this way. Everyone look this way because I know we can't live this way. Yes, go ahead. Oh, you're pointing out? So, so, so I'm not admonishing you to be perfect. I'm telling you, we got to start getting our perspectives to be reconciliation, new creature in Christ, Everything is of God. I'm ambassadors to Christ. If you start, I'm telling you, you're, 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 you are going to behave better if you, know, if you think that way. You're not going to be perfect, but you're going to behave better. Like if you're in your home by yourself, you're going to act a little bit different than 
you're, you're up on the, the pastor is asking a question in the middle of the sermon, right? Or you're in a Bible study. You're going to act a little bit different. You're not going to curse. You're not going to be rude. Be like that all the time, if you can, if possible. Yes. So, so, so really quick question. Um, mm -hmm. You have time. Um, so, what you're saying is, is that, I mean, I'm not going to say, like, to go, to, to, like, go with the flow on mm -hmm. things, mm -hmm. but what if you, like, you know, of course, when you start getting more sanctified, growing more and more in Christ, mm -hmm. um, but you should, but you should, you start to see some things around you that does not line up with the word of God. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, how, how do you deal with that without really coming off, like, you know, because I know that there's a lot of things that, that I've seen and we, we've all seen. Because um, I don't, for me personally, like, like, I don't like to go with the flow because, unfortunately, there are some churches that do that. Mm -hmm. They don't. There's no correction. There's no, hey, you know, I think this is wrong. I think this is false. Like how? Well, once again, how would you I'm not that? saying go with the flow. But think of it like this, right? You have a problem with not you, but someone in general has a problem with sexual sin. If you are focused on the fact that all things are in Christ, you are new in Christ. You know, you look at no man after the flesh. You're, you're renewing your mind. It's really hard to watch pornography. It's really hard to do it while seeing and thinking this way. This is an individual, personal thing. I'm not talking about the philosophy for life for everyone or the church. I'm saying individually, see no man after the flesh or woman after the flesh. See everything through spiritual eyes. Try to see that God is in everything. Try to, not that God is everything, but God is sovereignly working through everything. I'm sorry, I'm not able to do it. Like, I, I, there's certain sins I just cannot do, knowing that God, the God the Father is is is, is watching and 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 I'm and I'm I'm bringing to open shame. Like, I'm one of those people. I don't cry, but I'm telling you, if I when I I think about Jesus walking, and the cross and being whipped and there be like, I'm doing that every time I sin. It's hard to do that if you're a believer. If you're not a believer, it doesn't. It, there's nothing I'm going to say that's going to make you be right. I was going to say I don't always think that way. Maybe you're yeah. watching me. And that's why, to, and that's why you're able to do more. I'm more focused now on just yeah. doing the right thing or saying that. But when you when you conscious Christ, mm. yeah. Yeah. you said it makes it a lot. It's it's different. What it's, does the scripture say? Put you your through, mind on the things above. It doesn't say yeah. do yeah. act like you're in heaven. It says put your mind on the things above. Yeah. Right? Seek yeah. the kingdom of the righteousness of the, the kingdom of righteous first, and all all the things will be added onto you. He keeps telling you renew your mind. I'm just telling you what they're saying in all the other scriptures, and I'm trying to tell you this is what it's saying. Because I cannot tell you, follow me. Do what Glenn does, because you're going to be very ashamed very quickly. I'm telling you to, 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 to look at it the way God is telling you. I'm being honest, guys. You know, look at it the way God is telling you to look at it, and you're going to, you're going to be all the way over here, and before you know it, you're going to be closer, progressively closer to Christ. By, by, by just changing your perspective on things. Hey, I could watch this bootleg movie, but what am I saying about, you know, this is stealing, this is wrong. God, God, I can wait, and I'm, anyone can afford a movie eventually, right? Just wait. Um, any questions? I'll, I'll pay for the ticket, don't worry, I got you. One more question. If you start your day, yeah. Mm. To give you that mind today. Yeah. Mm. God speak. Amen. Put and watch over your mind, over your heart, over your desires. Because none mm. of us we can do any of it. Mm. But to consciously put ourselves in the life and to do the life every day and ask God. Mm. Today, help me to be the life that you need. That, that's what prayer is. Jesus is yeah. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. what Paul said. Amen. Amen. Spiritual mind, it's not because we can. Amen, amen. I, and, I, and I think that's why prayer is one of the most powerful things because you have to admit that He is who He is. And you have to submit to what He's saying. And if you just do that, that one thing is going to not, that's not the only thing, but that one thing is going to mature you so fast. Amen. All right. Um, Benito, can you pray?